sudden nobody wants them anymore. And it, we, we go to Saudi Arabia to buy oil, they say, well, you know, how about $300 a barrel? And next week I might charge you four. So it's a very bad thing if we lose our reserve currency status. So how could this have all happened? So we looked at um, what's been done, which is uh, the econo economic philosophy of Keynes, and what are the effects. But how, how could this have all happened? This is just crazy, right? Well, central to understanding how this could have happened is understanding the Federal Reserve Bank. So here are three facts about the Federal Reserve that you need to understand. The first one is that the Federal Reserve Bank was created in 1913. Now, from 1776 until 1912, it was about 136 years, there was zero inflation, absolutely no inflation. In fact, a dollar in 1776 um, would buy um, less than it would buy in 1912. In fact, it was, so it was a little bit reverse inflation. You could buy more with a dollar in 1912 than you could in 1776. So 136 years, no inflation at all. Well, all of a sudden, uh, on the stage in 1913, Woodrow Wilson decides, heck yeah, we'll, uh, we'll let this banking cartel print all our money for us. It'll be fine, really. And, um, and uh, so their stated purpose, but if you go to their website, is to maintain stable prices. That's why the Federal Reserve was created. At least that's what they tell all of the sheeple, which is us. That uh, the Federal Reserve Bank is trying to maintain stable prices, but we already had stable prices. It would move up and down a little bit, but it would stay about level. Um, and then, fact number three is, okay, well, what happened after 1913? Well, in that 99 years, the consumer price increase, um, price index decreased by 97%. In other words, your dollar can only buy 3% of what it could in 1912, as it does now. Go on for 136 years, no inflation. It turns on a dime in 1913, just, you know, just happens to be the year the Federal Reserve is created, and boom, all of a sudden, the amount of currency in circulation goes up, the value of your dollar goes way, way down. So you lost 97% of purchasing power. So inflation is absolutely tied to the Federal Reserve Bank. Whether you like it, or whether you love it, whether your mom works for the Federal Reserve and you think they should stay there forever, the fact is that the Federal Reserve is the, is the reason behind the inflation. And this is a graphical representation of what I just told you about. So on the left side here, this is 1776. And down here, uh, in the little green square, it's 1913. Um, and you can see what happened. Just basically no inflation at all. We're just moving along and you know, there's little waves in there, no problem. And then in 1913, it just starts to barely creep up. It's not too bad. You know, you, th you look at this part of the graph, it's not too bad. But then all of a sudden, it really starts to ramp up. And actually, this is an old chart. It only goes to 2008, and it's gone, it's gone way off the charts here uh, now. They've really ramped it up. So what happened between 1913 and, and 1971 here? So this was fairly reasonable, and then it goes crazy. I'm th I think a lot of you know what happened in 1971. That was the year that Nixon decided that the dollar was no longer convertible to gold. So one thing that kind of held back money printing, they did print money um, before 1971, but they, they couldn't go too batshit crazy with it because they had to guarantee the value of the dollar with gold. And so, in fact, the French saw what was happening. The French, the, the French were pretty smart. They, they had these piles of dollars and dollar-denominated assets, and they actually would load them up on warships and send them to the U.S. and have, um, have Fort Knox trade the dollars for bars of gold. 
And they did this for years until, um, until Nixon goes, wait a second, we're using up all our gold. Well, why, that, why is that a problem? The reason it's a problem is they printed too much money. And, um, and once, uh, once the, do the gold backing was taken away, there was absolutely no restriction. And a lot of people are, are surprised to find out what backs up our currency. It's absolutely nothing. It's just the paper it's printed on, and these days it's not even the paper it's printed on, it's digital. Ben Bernanke and his friends just go in and they dial in a number and poof, the money is created. <coughs> it's pretty close to that simple. So when you're listening to the news, they never talk about printing money. And there's a reason for that. It's because sensible people everywhere would say, wait a second, you're printing money. You know, what could possibly go wrong? Um, so instead, they use a code. They call it quantitative easing. And um, you hear about quantitative easing every day when you turn on the news. And they also have other shorthands for it. It's QE1, QE2, QE3. Now it's QE infinity. <coughs> And this isn't my opinion that quantitative easing is printing money. Right here we've got a quote from our friend Ben Bernanke again. This is a direct quote. He also thinks quantitative easing is printing money. He says, the U.S. government has a technology called a printing press that allows it to produce as many U.S. dollars as it wishes at essentially no cost. By increasing the number of U.S. dollars in circulation or credibly threatening to do so, the U.S. can also reduce the value of the dollar in terms of goods and services, which is equivalent to raising prices in dollars of those goods and services. A determined government can always generate higher spending and hence positive inflation. Do you hear the Keynesian overtones? It, and um, the whole idea behind Keynes is that they want to generate higher spending and positive inflation because it increases demand and it increases unemployment in the short term. He's right in the short term, but what are the longer term effects? So, and what's interesting is that if you look at the entire speech uh, that he said this in, he wasn't saying it in kind of a mousy way. It's like admitting, oh yeah, well, we do print money but kind of keep it on the slide. He was bragging about it. He was very, he was like, yay team. Look at this fantastic tool we've come up with. We, we can, anytime we want to generate higher spending, more demand, all we have to do is just turning on the printer, printing presses and you know, shake our own hands and uh, congratulate ourselves because we're so smart. And, and uh, you can see how an orthodoxy of thinking can lead you just to crazy places because this is what is taught in all of the universities today. So, um, if you don't remember anything else from this presentation, this is the most important fact. This is as reported by the Wall Street Journal. The Federal Reserve is propping up the entire U.S. economy by buying 61% of the government debt issued by the Treasury Department. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a second. So what, you know, what does that mean? Um, so th this is like if I had a gambling problem and I was selling IOUs to my buddies. And pretty soon my buddies you know, uh, decide that, you know, so I'll say to them, if you lend me $10 today, I'll pay you $12 next week or something basically what they're doing. But after a while, the buddies go, wait a second, this guy has a gambling problem. He's never going to be able to pay us back. We're going to stand back. And so instead, I go, well, I say to my wife, it's like, why don't you just buy these IOUs? You know, and, and that will make everything everything okay. So it's like if I, if I issued IOUs or bonds, <coughs> And I had my wife buy 61% of them. That's basically what our government is doing right now. They do it in a lot more sneaky way because this is illegal. It's illegal for the Treasury Department to directly sell at least a large amount of bonds to the Federal Reserve. No problem. We'll get 20 front banks 
to buy them for us. The 20 front banks go, it's approximately 20, 21. They go to the treasury auction with an agreement in hand already from the Federal Reserve that, that once they buy this worthless paper, they have a buyer to sell it back to and they also get a cut on top of it. And so this is what's actually happening. The Treasury Department auctions off T-bills, T-notes, bonds every, every month and um, they can't sell them all, so they sell them to these banks, and the banks sell them to the other part of the government, which is the Federal Reserve. And I understand that officially the Federal Reserve is a private bank, but in reality, it's doing the bidding of the government. And um, you can kind of think of the, uh, the uh, guy with the gambling problem selling uh, IOUs to his buddies. Well, the buddies in this case is like China and Japan and a lot of... Um, a lot of other investors, and they're starting to wonder if their money is safe. And in fact, China has talked about that quite a bit lately. So why is the government buying 61% of its own debt? Why would they do such a crazy thing? What could possibly go wrong? Um, so what they tell you on the news is, they, you know, they, they, they hide it behind things like quantitative easing, etc. And so they need to, they'll, they'll usually say that, um, oh, well, we're putting a lot of pressure on the Fed to ease policy so that, you know, the, the economy can recover. That's one, one thing that you'll see. And um, it, the private industry, they love, they love it when um, the government prints money and makes stock prices go up. And if you're positioned correctly, you can actually make a lot of money. Um, and so they tell you that it's because the economy is weak, and that's true. That is one reason. So they're not lying about that. But the problem is that what they're, the way that they are lying is they're not telling you the other reason why they're doing this. So the, the Fed has to buy these IOUs, the T-bills, etc., from the Treasury Department because nobody else will buy them at the interest rate that they're offering. And this is really important because if you think about it, well, you know, we don't have to play this game. We can just offer more interest on our um, bonds, correct? That would fix the whole problem. And so that's kind of what, what they're saying that they can do, you know, to reel this all back in. But as I point out here, soon this won't be possible. So it's like, yeah, we're not backed in the corner. We can, we can always get people to buy our debt by raising the interest rate. Actually, we can't, and here's why. So this is something that uh, the International Monetary Fund, which is part of the UN, um, when they're talking about this sort of thing happening in banana republics, they talk about exploding debt dynamics. And it kind of goes like this, but we'll take the US as an example. At the end of 2011, Uncle Sam paid an average of 2.24% interest rate on all the notes, bonds, and bills issued by the Treasury. But if you think about 2006, just six years ago, it was 4.92%, far more in line with the historical average. And in fact, historical average is a little higher than that. And, in, and sometimes it's been much, much higher. You know, what was it during Jimmy Carter? Eighteen percent, something like that. So it can go much, much higher. Um, but let's just say if it went back to 2006 levels, near five percent. So the interest on the debt right now is 227 billion dollars a year. It would double. It would more than double to almost half a trillion dollars if all they did was was offer an interest rate that was normal. That was almost normal, not even quite normal. Back at 2006 level, all of a sudden, we would get this exploding debt dynamics. We would, all of a sudden, we, you know, we have to offer a higher interest rate to get more investors. And now, our debt really goes crazy. Half a trillion dollars getting vaporized every year just from, in, from uh, interest. But it doesn't end there. Because... Now, this half a trillion dollars is going to make our financial situation worse, isn't it? It's going to make our debt worse. And so next year, these, you know, China or whoever is going to come around, they're going to go, 5%? You guys must be kidding. We want 7 
And so now they charge us 7%. Now we're vaporizing more money and more and more and more. And we see this with, uh, with Greece. Greece recently, I think they got up to, I don't know if anybody remembers the figure, but they got up to about 300% interest mm. because of this exact effect. And this is what has happened. Reinhardt and Rogoff, as I've talked about before, they've seen this over and over and over again in dozens and dozens of countries over many years. Once creditors realize we're in big trouble, demand for U.S. dollars, reserve currency will dry up and trillions of dollars will suddenly not have a home and uh, our demand for our dollars international and internationally will um, really dry up but don't worry oh, I went too far. <coughs> and yes so oh, there it is okay well we'll do this one first I got one other order so a lot, some of you might be thinking, okay, yeah, whatever, whatever. But you know, the pretty girl on uh, CNBC hasn't told me any of this. Maybe part of this is true, but he's probably exaggerating. You know, they're just crazy fringe ideas. Well, let's go back to our little friend, Ben Bernanke. He, um, he uh, said, to the Senate, but said this to the Senate Budget Committee this past February. He said, even the prospect,